We used to do a lot of hunting and fishing and white baiting, you know, good fun. And um, tragically, my younger brother was, had an, we had an accident, didn't, didn't pass away immediately. We thought we had the opportunity to get to the hospital soon enough, but tragically, he died on my arms in the car going through the hospital gates. At the funeral, I was questioning where did he go? And I'd sit on this grave and, at times and talk to him. Kind of believe that there must be an afterlife. You know, you just don't go. It's not all over, we're over when you pass away. That following year in January, I um, had applied and, and I joined the Navy. I did five years in the Navy, which was quite cool. It's an adventure. And in fact, it was in the Navy where, where I got attracted to skydiving. Skydiving wasn't a, a major adventure sport. It was a daredevil sport. Uh, a lot of risks in those days. Yes, yeah, so I, I started really, really enjoying that as a sport. Apply for a discharge and I went off to Australia. I enjoy pushing the limits, but no, I'm not risky. That's, that's probably the difference. You know, there's an edge, but don't go off the edge. Prior to leaving for Australia, I met someone who we had a number of conversations about what is life all about. And we discussed different things. And, and, I, and I felt that there was always, because of my previous experience and feelings about my brother, I knew there must be something beyond the grave. At a time where I was seeking, I remember one particular jump down in Canberra. This plane load went up and uh, one of the guys had a malfunction after they broke away from a freefall manoeuvre and his parachute failed to open. He, he pulled his reserve and his reserve never really opened properly. And then we were all there with our hearts, you know, in our mouths, and, and then suddenly, about 200 feet from the ground, it went and he landed. The thing that concerned me when he, was, when he came back was he was laughing about it. And uh, that really affected me, you know. Man, you're a second from impact, and it's over. And uh, he laughed about it. He kind of was, was tempting God. That was, that was, and that's how I began to feel after that. I didn't want to go jumping. In fact, I did, I did uh, three other jumps, but every time I went up, the butterflies and the, and the concern and the nervousness about jumping out when I was fearlessly jumping out before. But after that, it was like, I'm now, has have the sensation, I'm tempting God, right? Because I was not right with God, and that concerned me. Anyway, it was very soon after that I got saved. I remember struggling, struggling, because it was my love, my passion, my, everything I lived for was for skydiving at the time. As much as it was something I really loved, I had to pursue the sense that I was having to be drawn to God, to get to know what my life was all about. So that was the turning point. I believe the Lord was really seeking me for a long time. I remember going to a meeting, bursting out in tears and, you know, breaking down. It was a real, real touch from the Lord. I tried to run away, and that was one of the reasons why I'd gone to Australia, was to try to run away from myself, because I was not happy with myself. And uh, this was a new beginning. I realised that what I was pursuing with my skydiving a sensation of enjoyment, it was replaced by the realisation of being born again, having another life. That was fulfilling. I don't have to worry. You know, it's about a peace and it's about um, living to your, to, your, to your potential and beyond. God's not willing that anybody, anyone should perish but all come to a knowledge. And it's the realization that there's far more to life and far more beyond life.
that I could look forward to.